Emotions come and go from thoughts that ebb and flow to question these thoughts that flow and the emotions they bestow. Are they just a habit to break, to see the truth they cannot make? This voice talking inside our head, isn't that what makes us feeling bad? What if we no longer hear this inner voice? Unlike before, I've made this choice to be at peace, new, pure and free beyond my mind's captivity. What is the mind is the topic of this video. Let's dive into it. The ability to observe without evaluating is the highest form of intelligence. It's a quote from Jiddu Krishnamurti. Evaluating is one of the activities of the mind. But before I thought I was the one that was evaluating, that I was this inner voice, you see? By the way, if you're new here, I'm Jordan, 23 years old. Did over $4 million in revenue, hired over 50 people. I started making videos on YouTube in 2012. I share this because you have been conditioned to care about numbers and appearance, don't you? But it is effectiveness over appearance that works. So an effective question, what is an effective question? Can you separate yourself from these activities of the mind, such as evaluating? Yes, if you can see for yourself that it is not you who is doing all of this, that you are not your mind. But you're unserious if you believe me, if you believe in these words. You're serious if you ask yourself this. So think about it. When you walk outside, for example, do you experience nature directly? Or do you think about the things you see? Do thoughts come up when you see everything, the trees, whatever it is? This thinking is another activity of the mind. So most of us experience nature through the thoughts of the mind. Not directly. I mean, just ask yourself, when you look at the tree, do you look at it without thought? I never did. Maybe when I was young. If we really look at it, we'd say maybe, oh, this one is a bit uglier than that one. A bit more tall, a bit more nice. Especially the big ones in America and Canada. You see, this is all thinking. And therefore, all the mind. But the mind is like an invisible filter. Invisible because you think that it is you saying that the tree might be more ugly than that one. You think this is you. Or if I'm not saying this to you, because maybe you are a special person, most people do that. They think that way. I did before, but it is not you, you see. Your mind and you are separate. Or maybe better said, you don't have to be your thoughts. Do you understand this? It's a crucial part, that's why I ask. Because nothing else, it really matters if you continue to believe that you are this inner voice, that there is no other way if you continue to believe this. Thoughts are a product of the mind, and emotions come from these thoughts of the mind. I mean, stress is the mind, anger is the mind, joy is the mind, and almost everyone's days look the same from an emotional perspective. 90% filled with unwanted emotions, such as irritation, such as fear, such as stress, or mild stress, or pressure and 10% wanted emotions. It's not about these percentages or whatever it is, but most of the days are not filled with positivity, right? I mean, just ask yourself, do you feel happy right now? I mean, ask yourself, you don't feel happy that often, right? But how is this possible if we don't want to feel all these negative emotions? Possibly because we consider them normal, a normal part of my life now. After all, everyone feels this way, right? So if everyone is mentally ill, we think it is normal. This is true. This is what happens with almost anything that starts to become normal, well spread. Or maybe more importantly, what I've already said, that we really believe now that we are this voice inside of our head, which is the root of all of these unwanted emotions. But is it? Or is this a belief? Here's something that I found to be true for myself. As long as you believe you are the mind, you will continue to feel all of the emotions that come from these thoughts. Brings me to a quote from Lao Tzu. To the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. And I have not found one person in the self-improvement space who gives you nothing but practices to improve your mind, your state of mind. But do you see that this will always keep the mind alive? That you're merely improving it? Because that's very possible. I mean, just look at yourself. You may feel positive emotions a bit more often after doing all these practices. After meditation, during meditation, you might feel a positive emotion or calmer emotion during the meditation and maybe a bit 
a slight effect afterwards. Nonetheless, it will keep the mind alive. And maybe also because you've never heard that it is possible to disarm your mind, to no longer hear this inner voice. So after years of self-improvement, your days may look like in the most beneficial, your days may look like 60% unwanted emotions and maybe 50 40% wanted the emotion. So if this is what you want, by all means, stop watching here. I mean, this is not for you, this is... I'm not interested in that, so I, I won't talk about that. There's no point in watching this, if that's what you want. No judgment from my side, just not what I want. If you want to know why I see self-improvement as wasted years in my own life, you may watch this video next. But the premise of my findings, I think I can summarize them in, in four points. I did not know what I really, really wanted. I believed self-improvement was good for me, so I implemented all these success habits without question, and I did not look at the results I got. From all these habits, reading, meditating, journaling, vision boards, visualizing, affirmations, ice baths, sunlight, everything. So, I wasted my time. Now back to the mind. Instead of improving our mind, can we eliminate it? That's my question. Is there a way of living where we no longer hear this inner voice. And with that, I imply that it doesn't take effort because you no longer hear it. You're not closing your eyes. You're not closing your ears. You just no longer hear it. Just like many don't hear the birds, the beautiful birds here in the forest. So when there is no activity involved, such as ignoring, which is basically something that comes from the mind, then it becomes effortless. And that's the perfect situation, isn't it? So you don't crave the chips after you worked out. You just don't have that craving anymore. To no longer feel the emotions that are the consequences of our thoughts. Before I continue, did you just hear what I implied? That feelings arise from thoughts. So before you believe my implication here, just ask yourself, do I feel something when I have no thoughts? Do I have an emotion when I'm simply sitting and looking through the window, when there is complete silence inside my head? If you only feel an emotion when there are thoughts, and if thoughts are coming from the mind, then to no longer feel all these emotions, we must silence the mind, right? So how can we do this? How can we catch the mind and put duct tape on it? Well, we must know where it is, right? And the mind is very good at hiding because most of the times you believe it is you, this voice that may be speaking right now. So first you must understand that it is not you Understanding is the way. So do you understand that you are not this voice inside of your head? When you really understand this, you start to recognize this voice more often. Because so far, you weren't aware that often of this voice, right? It's just there. Like right now, I have to put almost an effort to hear the birds. You have to put effort into hearing your own voice, your inner voice, which is not you. So you start to become aware when it speaks. And when you do, you can start to find the place from where this voice comes from. You can get closer and closer the more you understand. And the most effective way to understand more is to want to understand. I mean, how much did you remember from or still understand from the school lectures back then? Or even after a day of the school lecture or even a week because you did not care, right? So do you care about this? That's my question to you. And if you didn't ask yourself any questions from this video, then you may ask only this one. What do you really care about? And if you do care about this, you may follow me to hear more of my understanding of my own mind so you can start to understand yours better. Only the serious person may check the show notes. Talk soon.